Hello everyone, and welcome. Today we're going to go through our 16-bit gen. Well, maybe not all. I think I'm just doing one. I might do one a little later. Kind of depends. I have a bit of a, bit of a headache today, but um, anyway, moving on. What to start with? Got Japanese stuff, American... Uh, let's start with loose cards. So we got the title is really small right there in the corner, but that would be Yee's Wonder from Yee's Three. Well, wise varies on uh, with to, uh, to my knowledge, Yee's is the proper way to sing. the original Breath of Fire. Anyone ever really thought the editing on the case was kind of bad? Having a back blotch there? Just to note. Lufia, the Fortress of Doom. Never beat Lufia 1 yet. Lufia 2, I have, and we will be getting to that. Battle Blaze. I believe I tried once. I believe it was quite horrible if I remember correctly. Bargain bins for th this horribly mutilated cartridge is uh, King Arthur in the Knights of Justice, and um, I can't remember. I I believe I did try it. I think it was some kind of weird tacticish tactic like game that was set up kind of like Lemmings or something. I think. I don't remember quite well. Mega Man X. Super Bomberman. Classic Bill. Mystical Ninja. With one of those goofy stickers on it. Now, uh... Power Instinct. I picked it up because it was a uh, had Atlas on it. If I remember quickly, it was a fighter game. I don't put stuff good number. We throw the entry in the Goggles Quest, which was called Demon Quest, which uh, was a new storyline. Um, it it looks very good, has same kind of challenge, and it has more of a ventral feel and some mo uh, some mode seven in it. Super Ghouls in Ghosts. The ghost goblins, I always get them all mixed up. This one is Super Ghouls in Ghosts. Uh, so, that's the only time I've seen that Capcom logo there. Capcom USA with bright red in the background. I've never seen that Capcom logo before on anything else. Doom, with its bright red cartridge. Uh, Vortex, which, um, this is a kind of weird mech game, it's, uh, it kind of uses the same technology that made, uh, Star Fox, Eye of the Beholder, which was ported on the Super Nintendo by Capcom, but I believe it was made by someone else, Act Razor 2, and we're gonna have to move some of the boxes over here, and of course, uh, the original Super Mario All-Stars. This wasn't the Wii release that gave uh, the um, Super, Mar Super Mario World on here. So, I've never actually even got to see that cartridge before. Super Castlevania 4. What was it 3? Yeah, that was 4. Wait, why did I say 3? I'm a bundling idiot there. <laughs> okay. Kobe's Dream Course. Kobe with Golf. Illusion of Gaia. I have multiple copies of these, and I hope the whole contest to get rid of the extra copies as gifts. Of course, Super Mario World, who doesn't have a copy of that? The horrible and bad Dragon's Lair port games, which are nothing like the original Dragon's Lair. It's CDI technology there. Sega CD, CDI, I believe those are all... Um, Kinda o Wage. I think I saw this for like a quarter in a bin somewhere, and um, I never heard of the company. Sita USA. Uh, 
for now, it looks like a fine game. I'm not sure if I ever tried it. Uh, Battleship. Battleship. Very interesting. You have classic Battleship, and it has kind of a weird story mode system that's uh, pretty interesting, too. Now, uh, my loose... I've uh, basically done all these in my uh, update videos, but one dual project J. I don't know how to pronounce it. Alchemist. I tried this one. Um, it was kind of an over the top action kind of game. Um, this is a Poyo Poyo game. Not sure what the Pacific Infra it is, or if it ever came to America. Eden, or, um, what was its American name, um, this is the one where you do the evolution crap, where you, uh, start as a fish and go through different ages and that, that, uh, clan of the Grey Wolf will be, this is the Japanese version, which is, uh, much more easier to get without spending hundreds of dollars. Hawk yours 4. Lady Stockel. Now, uh, a few of these box ones we've went over. Four, oop, uh, collapse. Super Japanese Famicom games do not sit up well like American ones, sadly. Eep. Anyway, Shimon Tensei If, which still has no English patch. Boohoo on the translating community. Albert Odyssey, which has multiple versions. This is the original, as far as I'm aware of. Uh, pretty good. Also, uh, probably should have showed the back of Shimon if, since uh, it's probably not too common to see the box boxes of most of this stuff. So, uh, this is Shimon Tensei, a, uh, the Shimon Tensei 2. which has a connection to Nocturne. Uh, Romancing Saga 3, which has a pretty nice artwork on it that doesn't really make too much sense to me. I like how the uh, games were in, like, VHS boxes. Like, if you want an idea how to American boxes, that's... See, it's a little shorter on this end and a little taller, so... This is basically the exact size of a VHS box. And while we're at, Corner Trigger. Yeah. So anyway, uh, the Woodrow Shimmerton say... And it, yeah, it has a horrible sticker right there. Bad, bad people. Dragon Quest V, before it was ever announced that it was going to get remade, so... But it is a very lovely box in that. And all these boxes have the booklets, too. Uh, the Japanese ones. Corn Trigger and my other American one do not have their uh, books. All these Japanese ones do. Shim Tensei, The Last Bible 3, which is... Um, Bible 1 came as a different title in America. I uh, don't never off the top of my head. And the uh, second one never came to America. The third one, as you can see, is a Super Nintendo entry. Romancing Saga 2. Probably my favorite entry in the whole freaking shebang. I really loved the, the whole concept of this game. It's really shame that there was a, only a half English translation patch of it. Uh, Dual Orb 2, which was uh, something I did get more recently, and I did uh, show it in one of my update videos. Mr. Gawk was also with it. Now, uh, some other ones I didn't get to show is Bahum Bahamoth Lagoon, which is probably one of the most epic games that we completely missed out on the Super Nintendo. I mean, the whole concept of the party is a bunch of dragoons with dragons. Kick ass, right? I still remember. Treasure Hunter G. Which uh, basically used the same kind of battle system as our other game here. 
which is one I specifically remember very well, live a live or live a evil, varying on how you want to pronounce it. Um, it can be confusing, varying on different people's opinion now. Um, and it is supposed to mean evil. It, it, it has a meaning to the storyline. It's a dual meaning, which is very nice. Good to see all the characters and that. This is kind of a time travel storyline where, um, basically you get different scenarios and you play each main character in their timeline through a scenario. And, um, in the end, a uh, giant cast of father destruction thingy happens and everyone meets each other and you go fight the great evil thing. So anyway, we need to make a little more room here. Eh. Got lots clogged up stuff. Eh. Moving forward with more stuff here. Eh. Okay, these ones are kept on a different shelf. Uh, the original Act Razor, which uh, we did a full uh, non commentary, let's play that. A personal favorite of mine, The Seventh Saga, which has a different title on them in Japan. I know it was uh, very, very uh, changed a lot in its English release, but I'm forgiving of that. Uh, uh, Final Fantasy IV. And yes, I know it says too, it's full shot. And as you can see, it's damaged. And that was an accident that happened when I was a little. Uh, somebody tripped over it and damaged the cartridge. So it has a piece of tape around it. This is sad, very sad condition, sadly, of one of my favorite games. But it is the game, you could say, that started it all. Final Fantasy. Mystic Quest. I remember getting this from Pawn Shop when I was little. And, um, I had already played Final Fantasy 4, and I played a few other RPGs, and I'm like, Ooh, no Final Fantasy game, because I, I really wanted to get 6. And I'm like, well, this is something. And it was something completely different, but I really, really liked it, because it was around the time I played Lufia 2, and it kind of had the same kind of premise of being a have Zelda elements in an RPG realm, and I really like, really like that. I really wish there'd be... Okay, now, of course, somebody put the grand music off-bound! Yay! Uh, it's nice though in this, considering that there has still been no American release on the virtual console or anything, and it's either due to legal reasons or, um, there are different theories. No one really knows. Sadly, this cartridge is a little beat up on the back. Um, this was a uh, bot used. It works, battery's good, and everything, and I solely played it on there. Um, it is in horrible condition, but it's not the greatest condition either. Now, uh, a pretty uh, blue game is a uh, wham and a half. Hard battle. Uh, it's pretty meh. It's kind of interesting too, because if I remember correctly, um, this game never came out. Oh, not the game. Um, the the series never came to America at the time when they bought over. So it was like, what the heck is this? Okay, another. This one. Secret of Evermore. I loved Secret of Evermore. I got it at a pawn shop. It always seems like when I was little, I was getting a lot of my stuff from pawn shops back then. Secret of Evermore was a lovely treat that I hold dear to my heart. It does have bugs in it, but it was fun. I never got the experience, of course, what most people consider the clone of Secret of Mana back then. It would be something I would play in a much later date. Then next 
we have my favorite Zelda game. If you ever watched my little uh, Zelda response video to uh, Nintendo goal, the Nintendo fan goal, all that. Um, Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past. Favorite, favorite, favorite. Is my absolute favorite in the Italian series, and I still hold it dear as best in the Italian series. Eat that, okay, enough time. Then, of course, one of the RPGs on my top five RPGs of all time, Wolfia 2. And sorry, Wolf the Clan Grey Wolf. I disagree with your um, statement saying there's a lot of random objectives for the first half. I, I liked the lightheartedness of that. Uh, one moment I remember was really funny was uh, chasing down the two thieves who stole the king's crown. Those thieves were good, clearly, for the beginning. I really enjoyed the full game, so I, I didn't really have a problem with that, like he said. Um, I'm not sure the full way to pronounce it. Um, it's basically a magic dungeon. I'll just call it Tloon's Magic Dungeon. Tloon is his, um, Japanese name. And, um, his American name was, uh, Ta Taku, Takudu. Oh, I'm trying to remember. But, uh, it's, a, it's the first Dragon Quest Magic Dungeon game starring, uh, the merchant from Dragon Quest IV. Um, it's a pretty tough game. There was an English translation in that, so it's fully playable in that. There's no problem. So, and of course, um, if you would ask me, out of the mana series, what mana game I like the most, most other people would probably tell you Secret of Mana. And it's not that I hate Secret of Mana, it's just I didn't really like the sprite artwork for a lot of the characters. It didn't really rub me the right way, to be honest. The story and everything, gameplay's awesome, that. But I really like the Thord entry so much more than Secret of Mana. It had an art style I liked, and it improved more on the battle system, which was basically the same thing, with, you know, sorry, improvements. It had a story arc system. Um... You had basically three potential storylines that uh, two out of the um, four, five, six characters each uh, went through. So you had three different final bosses you could experience and many different team setups. And then added on that, all the characters had different kind of class ranks they could evolve into, causing them to become different types of mixtures of skills, healing magic, fighting magic, and stuff. So, there, there was a lot of replay value in that one. Then, of course, we have a Super Mario RPG. The Legend of the Seven Stars. The box is pretty beat up, sadly. But it actually retained life. Unlike pretty much everything else I owned. And no, the Corn Trigger one is not one I owned before. This is my only box I ever had that survived. <sighs> but we're a good box to survive. Uh, what can what can you say about Super Mario RPG? It's my favorite out of the whole RPG series of Mario. Um, I've only been Paper Mario on N64. I own all the other ones. I haven't starred the Thousand Year Door, and I did play a good chunk of the Wii one, but yeah, I just stopped playing it. I haven't really got back to it. This one, this one is ultimately my favorite. And Square, Square Enix and Nintendo really need to make up and just freaking make another one. It's like, it's not that I completely hate Pop Paper Mario or the uh, Super Saga series, though I don't really like, I don't think they're horrible games, it's just not my cup of tea with the timing thing. It's an interesting idea. Like, in Super Mario RPG, kind of like with Mother 3, it was kind of an optional thing, not really forced upon you. But in um, the Saga series, it is something forced upon you, and it wasn't something that was necessarily my cup of tea, because some things were okay, and other things were bad. Kind of a mixed bag, though. But, uh, anyway, that's all my Super Nintendo games. Sure, it's not very large, but it only is a pretty good chunk of very well-known RPGs from both Japan and America. 
with a few random entries here and there, and of course there's more and more that I really wish I could get and stuff, but many of them are becoming harder and harder to acquire. I actually forgot about this one, which uh, I tried it, and it's very interesting looking, but um, I don't know if there's an English patch for it. I tried to look, and I couldn't find anything except for a small blog that talked about it. Uh, to my understanding, it's some kind of time storyline, so it looks pretty interesting. Um, I'm hoping I can uh, see if there's a guide or anything to help play that one. But anyway, um, not very much else to add. Uh, I love the Super Nintendo. It, it, I have to agree with Wu. It's one of the greatest places for a lot of classic RPG gems now. A lot of people's favorite entries or during the Super Nintendo and PlayStation 1. There was a lot of classics there for a lot of people. But, um, yep, that's it. And I hope, uh, I hope some of you are enjoying. If you have any questions or anything, uh, please leave a comment. I, I really would like if people would leave comments about stuff that, you know, I'd, I'd like to hear suggestions, questions, stuff, you know. Anyway, uh, peace out. Bye-bye.